wake me when it's over. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we'll be counting down our picks for the top 20 most creative and enthralling scenes that almost redeemed bad movies. Hold on! Number 20, Fencing, Die Another Day. Let's do this the old fashioned way. First blood drawn from the torso. What, you've never had an all-out brawl that stretched across an entire social club before? Apparently 007 is on a whole new level of fencing. It's not just the crazy battle between Bond and Gustav Graves that stands out in this film, but the completely dismissive attitude afterwards. You'd think after grabbing swords and throwing punches that the two men wouldn't be as calm as they are. But with a simple laugh, Graves declares Bond the winner, and everyone goes about their business. Too bad, because for the duration of the fight, we thought the film had actually found its footing. Seriously, you beat me, Mr. Bond. Number 19. It was Tuesday. Street Fighter. It was 20 years ago. You hadn't promoted yourself to general yet. You were just a petty drug lord. Remember when we still had hopes for video game adaptations? All right, maybe we never really had those. But in the catalog of disappointing video game adaptations, the Street Fighter one has at least one shining moment. Raul Julia's performance as the power mad dictator M. Bison. Of course! This character alone makes the movie worth watching, as every Bison scene is more entertaining than the last. Not for power, not for evil, but for good but nothing compares to his response to the captured Chun Li's seething hatred for him. He remarks that her father's death was merely a Tuesday. For you, the day Bison graced your village was the most important day of your life. But for me, it was Tuesday. Number 18, Sparring with Angelica, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. You might say that At World's End could have closed out a Pirates trilogy, and On Stranger Tides was unnecessary from the get-go. While most of the franchise's fourth installment has since been forgotten, meeting Penelope Cruz's Angelica was a pleasantly surprising moment. While on the trail of a Captain Sparrow imposter, Jack clashed swords with an enemy who was not so stranger after all. Only one person alive knows that move. It turns out she was a former lover in disguise, and the fight ended with the two locking lips instead of blades. Always wanted to do that. Hello, Angelica. The narrative switchback harkened back to the swashbuckling fun of the early films and introduced one of the movie's better characters. Recognizing Angelica from a signature sparring move, not her looks, was vintage Jack. And we remembered why we love him. Don't worry, Jack. I forgave you a long time ago. For what? For leaving you? Recall that I left you. Number 17, The Final Chase, The Lone Ranger. An updated Lone Ranger isn't something that we were exactly clamoring to see on the big screen, especially if it was going to look like this. Horse dead. I can see that. Now what? There is at least one good scene in the movie. Unfortunately, it's at the very end. After two hours of questionable casting choices, dull humor, and unremarkable action, we finally get something that's worth a bit of excitement. <laughs> The titular Lone Ranger goes riding across buildings on horseback, jumps onto a train and barely makes it into the tunnel, then engages in a shootout while still riding on horseback inside a train. Yeah, just fast forward until you hear that iconic theme. Number 16, Escape from Isla Nublar, Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The largely unloved Jurassic World follow-ups are not great arguments to support Hollywood's sequel craze. We need to get on that boat. The rock's good, we're safe on the rock. Fallen Kingdom didn't come with the nostalgia and tongue-in-cheek humor like its predecessor, but it did come with this poignant escape sequence. <laughs> Ah! 
As an erupting volcano drowns Isla Nublar in flames, our heroes race to board a frantically departing ship. Hold on! As they look back, the action slows to mourn the dying island as it's consumed by ash. The movie has already offered debate as to whether or not the dinosaurs should be saved, but this moment makes it feel real. The heartbreak is genuine, made resonant by the lost animal's cries and the actor's believable reactions. And we can't forget that last Brachiosaurus vanishing in the distance. No, you're crying. Number 15. Harley Quinn's Introduction – Suicide Squad I should kill everyone and escape? Sorry. The voices. DC had a pretty rough 2016, as both Batman vs Superman and Suicide Squad were met with rather mediocre responses. But one thing that most agreed on was Margot Robbie's portrayal as Harley Quinn. Okay, bad writing meant that that got mixed reviews, too. Huh? What was that? But her intro was pretty fun, right? From the cage dancing to delighting in Mr. J killing a guy, it's a pretty solid portrayal of Quinn. Come on, Puddin! Do it! Only to be interrupted by Batman because of course he just had to ruin a date night. It's a glimpse of the craziness of the couple, even if the rest of the movie glosses over the whole abusive psychopath thing. Oh, I'm not gonna kill you. I'm just gonna hurt you. Really, really bad. You think so? Well, I can take it. Number 14. The Forest Fight. Transformers Revenge of the Fallen. You know it's a bad sign when the lead actor and director essentially admit that the movie is quote, crap, unquote. Break down the old enough components of Energon, assume a constant K-rate, and extrapolate breach of the 14 galactic convergence took the Sentinel Prime expedition receiving it. This film is basically the equivalent of a kid grabbing two robots and smashing them into each other while sprinkling in bad one-liners at every chance they get because comedy, right? <laughs> oh, and don't forget girls. Sam? Is that your girlfriend? That being said, the forest fight is definitely something to write home about. Optimus Prime does what he does best, kicking Decepticon butt despite being completely outnumbered. It's exactly what you want out of a Transformers movie, complete with the heroic, albeit temporary, death of Optimus Prime. Number 13. Snake Eyes and Jinx vs Ninjas – G.I. Joe Retaliation Honestly, we're not sure how we got a sequel after the first film, but hey, at least this one got one scene right. You definitely have to turn your brain off for this fight sequence, as it completely abandons the laws of physics in favor of some admittedly fun over-the-top action. A battle against ninjas via ziplining through mountains? Check. Running along the mountainside for slow motion sword fights? Like video game characters waiting for reaction commands? Check. Surviving an avalanche that you purposely caused with your cargo intact as if nothing happened? All we can say is, yo, Joe. Number 12. The Wire Cutter. Ghost Ship. This opening sequence of Ghost Ship is bloody, gorgeous, and haunting. On a 1960s ocean liner, a dreamy diva creates the perfect atmosphere with a hypnotizing aria. An adorable young girl assembles Scrabble letters to read, I'm bored. She playfully joins everyone else on the dance floor until a rogue wire slices all of the adults in half. It's a gruesome yet undeniably clever way to go. Straight out of an episode of A Thousand Ways to Die. It's a shame that viewers found the rest of the movie drab, predictable, and devoid of scares. The subtle moments of nuanced character and chilling ambiance never reappear. Approximately 89 minutes of Ghost Ship are bland and ordinary, but the first three might occupy your nightmares rent-free. 
Number 11. The Light Cycles – Tron Legacy Eye candy at its very best, there's not much to this movie when it comes to story and character. You're Mr. Flynn? Why? But man, is it ever a visual masterpiece. This scene encapsulates the very best parts of the film, as Sam watches those iconic light cycles in action. As cool as it is to see them digitize into the grid, it's Sam's slow motion run accompanied by Daft Punk's fantastic soundtrack that really sets the tone for the best three minutes of this Tron sequel. The twists and turns, the hard hits, the clever teamwork, all of it creates a scene you'll definitely want to watch on repeat. Number 10. Birth of Sandman – Spider-Man 3 There's a change in the silicon mass. Yeah, it's probably a bird. It'll fly away when we fire it up. Like the other villains in this overstuffed superhero flick, the Sandman mostly fell flat on a character level, but at least his powers made leeway for some stunning special effects. Flint Marco's transformation into the Sandman is easily among the most atmospheric and breathtaking moments in the film. After becoming one with the sand, Flint has trouble pulling himself together. Upon spotting his daughter's locket, however, the newly born Sandman summons the strength to push forward. Rather than relying on dialogue, this scene allows the visuals to tell the story. Every grain of sand brings out Flint's confusion, shock, and ultimately determination, exploring a wide array of emotions in just a couple of minutes. Number 9. Battle Through Time – X-Men Origins – Wolverine can you run? The X-Men franchise hit a low point with this frustrating origin story. During its opening credits, though, audiences likely thought that they were about to watch a solid film. The sequence follows half-brothers James and Victor as they fight through several wars. Beginning in the American Civil War, we jump from World War I to World War II to Vietnam. Aside from showing how much time has passed, the scene effectively conveys the carnage these two ageless mutants have endured over the years, and the toll it's taken on their humanity. The slick editing and powerful imagery makes the entire sequence feel like a living graphic novel. <laughs> Number 8. History of Baseball – The Ridiculous Six Welcome, my friends. To the first ever playing of a new sport. During their travels, our heroes cross paths with Abner Doubleday, the man once widely believed to have invented baseball. According to this Adam Sandler comedy, Doubleday actually intended the sport to be called Sticky McSchnickens. He also apparently made up all the rules as he went along. What are you going to call this guy? What else? Sticky McSchnickens. When you really think about it, the guidelines of baseball do sometimes seem haphazard in nature. Why are players allowed to steal bases? How did they decide on three strikes? Why are there only nine innings? This scene provides several ridiculous explanations, hitting it out of the park with one big laugh after another. Too bad the rest of the film is more of a strikeout. You can just run all the way home. A home runner. I need a cold drink. Number 7. Warehouse Fight – Batman vs Superman – Dawn of Justice Character development might not be his strong suit, but we'd be lying if we said Zack Snyder didn't know how to shoot a cool action sequence. Interestingly enough, the best set piece in this film wasn't the titular fight between Batman and Superman, but the Dark Knight's warehouse assault. On a mission to save Martha! Batman crashes in on Lex Luthor's kidnappers for hire. Thus ensues an exceptionally choreographed scene that showcases Batman's stealth and fighting skills to their fullest extent. He also breaks out plenty of neat gadgets in the process, taking down multiple thugs simultaneously. Batman truly feels like a one-man army here, reminding us why criminals everywhere fear the cape and cowl. Number 6. Final Shootout – Miami Vice Following in the footsteps of many other movies based on nostalgic TV shows, Miami Vice failed to capture the appeal of its source material. With director Michael Mann behind the camera, however, this 2006 adaptation did offer one striking scene. The film naturally builds up to a final shootout, where Sonny and Rico blow away a slew of human targets. 
cinematographer Dion Beebe throws us right into the middle of the action, making the surrounding gunfire all the more heated. The audience can feel every brutal kill, particularly when Rico takes down cartel security and intelligence man Jose Yero. Though thoroughly forgettable as a whole, Miami Vice certainly manages to go out on a high note. Number 5. Creation Noah Let me tell you a story. Even if you thought Darren Aronofsky's biblical epic was a total shipwreck, it's hard not to appreciate this particular scene. Early on, Noah tells his family the story of their world's creation. In the beginning, there was nothing. Nothing but the silence of an infinite darkness. While Noah's words are reminiscent of what you read in the Bible, the images on screen feel like a highly stylized science program. Mixing elements of both creationism and evolution, we're taken on a journey through time that starts with the Big Bang and leads up to Adam and Eve. But they ate from the forbidden fruit. Their innocence is extinguished. Bound to spark some interesting debates, there are numerous different ways to interpret this sequence, which, quite frankly, would have made for a great standalone short film. Everything that was beautiful, everything that was good, we shattered. Number 4. First Person Shooter – Doom I know you. You're my brother. Video game movies are notorious for being dead on arrival, and Doom is no exception. During the film's climactic battle, however, we're finally treated to five blissful minutes of pure fan service. Paying homage to its source material, the film shifts to a first-person perspective as Reaper shoots his way out of a research facility. Navigating through a dark, creepy environment with deadly predators lurking around every corner, the audience feels as if they're part of the action. For a few fleeting moments, this film successfully brings the original survival horror game to life. If only the rest of the movie went all out on a hardcore Henry approach. I'm shutting you down, mate. Number 3. Battle of Britain – Pearl Harbor One gets the sense that Michael Bay was trying to make the next Titanic with this historical love story. Instead, Bay proved once again that he's not exactly a thinking man's director. With that said, Bay's knack for action is put to effective use in a couple of scenes. The highlight of the film isn't the main attack on Pearl Harbor, but rather the Battle of Britain. Nice shot, Red Two. Volunteering to fight alongside the British Royal Air Force, American pilot Rafe McCrawley takes off for the most intense flight of his life. I'm under fire. I'm taking fire. The cinematography, sound, and visuals create a genuine sense of dread, especially as Rafe's plane plummets down to what looks like his watery end. Oh my God. Number 2. Freeway Chase – The Matrix Reloaded As much as everybody wanted to like The Matrix Reloaded, we just couldn't forgive the film's meandering dialogue and unfocused plot. Nonetheless, the Wachowskis did deliver one action sequence that lived up to the first installment. With the twins and multiple agents hot on their trail, Morpheus and Trinity attempt to get the keymaker across a crowded freeway. In what could have been a standard car chase, the filmmakers throw kung fu, gunplay, and explosions into the equation, amounting to an insanely inventive spectacle that never slows down. The fact that this set piece was primarily executed using practical effects only adds to the awe factor, leaving the audience struggling to catch their breath. It's okay, keep moving. Let's go. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Duel of the Fates – Star Wars Episode 1 – The Phantom Menace Although we've all taken shots at the prequel, the utter awesomeness of this sequence is hard to deny. Facing off with Darth Maul, Qui-Gon Jinn, and Obi-Wan Kenobi engage in a lightsaber duel of epic proportions. With 
with the fight choreography and John Williams' rousing musical score firing on all cylinders, audiences briefly forgot how they felt about this otherwise divisive flick. <laughs> The scene additionally marks a pivotal moment for Obi-Wan as he promises his fallen master that he'll train Anakin Skywalker, who will inevitably become Darth Vader. Promise me you will train the boy. Yes, master. Which of these scenes saved your viewing experience? Let us know in the comments. He is the chosen one. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Watch Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.